Good morning from Sydney, Australia. It's a pleasure to be invited by Eduardo by Strocchi to participate in this second launch that I've been to of the uh, work on international tax treaty disputes. Uh, the first one having been at the IFA Congress in Rio, and I think there are more scheduled around the world over time. I think it's important to launch this work uh, around the world because it is a global work and it's a very significant work in the area of tax treaty disputes. Sheer size, two volumes, over 1600 pages and it's been five years in the making for Eduardo and the large team of authors and uh, commentators that he assembled to take part in the exercise. Uh, I think some of the most interesting material, despite the wealth of uh, factual material about what's happening in countries, some of the most interesting material is the analytical perspectives, uh, several of them that Eduardo offers in the concluding chapters of the work. Uh, John Avery Jones has already uh, extracted some of the statistics out of this and um, I want to just comment briefly on the other side of it which is the the lens that is being applied to uh, tax treaty disputes. I think the idea of international tax is a technology uh, is a helpful way to think about it and similarly the two-sided platform analysis that Eduardo uh, outlined uh, in his presentation and which uh, his article in the uh, Oxford Journal uh, elaborates also is a very helpful way to think about uh, something, especially as in one sense uh, BEPS is all about Google and Google of course is a two-sided platform. Uh, so Eduardo's uh, contribution in those uh, new areas of thinking uh, is significant in the work. What I want to discuss tonight is the contribution that the work may make going forward in the post BEPS era. Uh, the work is described itself as a pre-BEPS snapshot uh, of tax treaty disputes and we all know that the dispute resolution landscape is going to change as a result of BEPS, indeed is already changing or has already uh, changed. Uh, I think there will be three areas where um, dispute resolution will go. John Avery Jones outlined in his presentation uh, or raised the question in his presentation whether MAP will become the way forward, the mutual agreement procedure with the backup of arbitration for those countries which adopt arbitration either inside or outside the uh, multilateral instrument. I think the answer to that question is an obvious yes, uh, but it's only part of the story. I think different disputes will go down different routes uh, as we go forward. For the mutual agreement procedure, I think it will be uh, most typically as it's already been, but will continue to be uh, transfer pricing disputes and particularly disputes in the transfer pricing traditional areas of pricing and methodologies. I think the more novel BEPS uh, material, the accurate delineation of the actual transaction in the BEPS jargon or um, the recharacterization of transactions at the extreme uh, will still more likely end up in court than in the mutual agreement procedure because often in the mutual agreement procedure the tax administrators will be following the BEPS guidance. The taxpayer will be wanting to challenge whether that new guidance is legitimate in a judicial or legal sense as opposed to an administrative sense. Uh, so in that area I think we'll see increasing disputes as we've already seen uh, in the OECD data uh, and it will become even more important than it is now. Secondly, and this shares with the mutual agreement procedure, uh, the problem going forward that getting data and insights into what's happening is going to be very difficult. 
uh, is the area of alternative dispute resolution, uh, mediation and variations on those approaches where some respected figure, maybe a retired judge, maybe someone else who's very senior in the international tax area, meets with the parties and tries to mediate or otherwise bring them together to a resolution of a dispute. Uh, at the moment, uh, I don't think we get data on that and going forward, I think it will be important to try and get data in that area, both of the kinds of disputes, the issues that are being dealt with specifically and the kinds of resolutions that are coming out of it, as well as time frames and other information that we get at the moment for the mutual agreement procedure. Uh, there is a risk as we get more informal uh, dispute resolution uh, that we will lose transparency and I think the OECD should be attempting to keep transparency uh, in the dispute resolution area uh, and to increase transparency which it's trying to do for the mutual agreement procedure but is going to be challenged in alternative dispute resolution. I think ADR will apply to similar kinds of disputes as uh, go into the mutual agreement procedure. Also maybe uh, parties will be willing to, to take a quick um, testing from a, a senior international tax figure on legal issues uh, rather than pursuing uh, court proceedings which are notoriously expensive and lengthy. And I, I think that's an area that we need to focus more on and to develop um, an understanding of as, as we go forward. Uh, and then thirdly, we'll have um, court proceedings. I think court proceedings, which is the main but not the only subject of uh, the two-volume work that we're launching tonight, uh, will remain important and at least in the short term I think uh, there will be a lot of activity in courts as uh, parties and tax administration test the new uh, norms, the new laws that have come out of the, the BEPS process. Um, <clears throat> So far as those disputes are concerned, I think we can identify a, um, a number of uh, trends. Firstly, I think the traditional kinds of issues that have gone to um, court proceedings will continue to do so. Is there a permanent establishment? Is a payment a royalty? Is a payment interest? And so on. Those issues which are uh, much more legal issues than factual uh, issues or issues where there are not clear uh, and fairly bright line legal tests uh, will continue to be uh, often litigated as much as taken through other, other processes. Uh, and that will be particularly so in the short term as uh, tax administrations at the moment as are testing the past, that is having a post-BEPS lens, but in fact using pre-BEPS norms and laws uh, in the litigation process. And we can expect, we've already seen in some countries, litigation in, in that area. Uh, but more than that, I think BEPS means uh, a number of other uh, important developments uh, will occur. Uh, firstly, and somewhat paradoxically, treaties I think will become less important as the international um, tax technology uh, than they have been in the past. Uh, I think there are many reasons for this but just to highlight two of them, the introduction of the principal purpose test, the limitation of benefits uh, article into any treaties uh, will mean that there is uh, much less relief being given at source or at least many more challenges to relief at source than we currently uh, see. And I think that's an area uh, where the map and particularly alternative dispute resolution may be important because particularly the principal purpose test is very open-ended and it may be difficult for judges 
to reach consistent and clear uh, guidelines in how those tests are to be applied. They're much more likely to be similar to transfer pricing disputes rather than to typical hard law disputes in the treaty area. Secondly, the saving clause means that residents can no longer in a number of areas rely on treaties. So both non-residents and residents are losing uh, rights that they have at the moment under treaties in, in the sense that there will be carve-outs or glosses on those treaty rules which were not previously there in most cases except for the US and which um, will mean that treaties are effectively applicable in fewer cases than has been the case in the past. Um, <clears throat> secondly, BEPS is as much about or more about domestic law changes than it is about treaty changes. Uh, the OECD has been shifting for some time, the VAT area is a good example, into soft law and into international standards rather than international legal instruments, although we will have both going forward. Uh, that also means that less content um, is likely to be, in a dispute sense, uh, be treaty content as opposed to being cases on do um, thin capitalisation or interest barrier rules apply in a particular situation. Uh, but that leads me to the third area of litigation where I think it will be the new area. Uh, in both those previous areas the book has a lot to contribute but in this new area I think we're entering uh, uncharted territory and that is the problem what happens when hard law meets soft law. There are a number of unresolved issues in my view under the BEPS project uh, as to how these kinds of issues are going to be dealt with. I won't elaborate on this this evening but I am working in the area at the moment and will uh, in due course be uh, producing some papers on it. But particularly articles uh, 7 on business profits, 9 on the arm's length principle and 24 on non-discrimination it seems to me can collide with a number of the soft law areas. Uh, Action 2 report has some discussion of this. Uh, at the moment we are waiting with bated breath for guidance on the interaction of transfer pricing norms in relation to interest rates and interactions with other BEP soft law measures uh, and that has been a very long time coming. Uh, but I think what we have there is underdone and is highly contestable. I think in the non-discrimination area, for example, uh, since the 2008 changes, there's a clear divergence between what the courts are doing and what the OECD is saying. For instance, the group theory in the non-discrimination area has been more or less uniformly rejected in, in the courts um, to date. Uh, I think we're going to see more arguments of that kind, that these soft law norms simply don't stand up under uh, non-discrimination or, for example, in relation to the um, recent work that's been done on hybrids, mismatch arrangements uh, for permanent establishments. I think a lot of that work uh, is significantly um, challengeable in relation to whether it is conforms with Article 7 or will produce more tax than would arise under Article 7. So I, I think we're going to see a new area of litigation. It's going to be the clash of hard law and, and soft law. And, and I think uh, when the authors, if and when they come to do the post FEPS version of the transfer tricing and other dispute resolution areas, uh, this will be a fertile area for them to operate in. Well, that's enough from me. I hope you have a great evening. Uh, I really welcome the publication of, of this book and I wish uh, the authors and particularly Eduardo uh, all success for the future in these kinds of endeavours. Thank you.